My first memory of Orange County was Eastern States weekend, to be able to watch in the drive-in and the tailgating and the excitement of like the fans being able to hang out and there's never a dull moment. The world of sports has many main events. Football has the Super Bowl. Soccer has the World Cup. NASCAR has the Daytona 500. And the Orange County Fair Speedway has the Eastern States 200. Gary, this is the 39th edition of the Eastern States Weekend. What a history both for this track and for this event. It is. Anytime you do things for 39 years in a row, it means it's successful. This is probably the biggest and best and certainly the best one in a long time. I've been going there since day one. I mean, I was born in August and I'm sure I was at Eastern States in October. Most of the times when you look back at a picture, you're most likely looking at Eastern States weekend where, you know, it's shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow. It's just packed. It's full. Everywhere you go, it's racing. It's a giant race weekend that just kind of starts on Thursday and Sunday night. And when it's over, you just feel like, wow, what just happened? When we run the Eastern States back when I race it, it was standing room only. Standing room only. The Eastern States 200 is an annual race that has been held at Orange County Fair Speedway since 1962. Originally a 100 lap race, it was quickly extended to 200 laps in 1968. Drawing a highly competitive feel from all across the country, it has become a staple in Orange County and dirt modified racing. All the big names have won it. Hagel and Schneider and the Rudiman brothers and Ballou and Cozy and so forth. And we've got 11 former champions in the field today. So it's got a lot of prestige. His tradition has created stories and memories for all who have attended over the years. Gentlemen, start your engine. There you have it. Watching Eastern States from the stands in 69 uh, or whatever it was and watching Will Cagle win Eastern States. We did not see Will Cagle, who had won our point championship in 66, 67, 68, 69, and 70. In 1971, he did not run Middletown. But he came up for Eastern States. He won it. Just always remember that as a kid. I was always appreciative of what Will Cagle did, but I was a Buzzy Ruderman fan. One of the Eastern States 200, I was leading. I thought I pretty much had them covered, and then they had a big wreck, and they stopped all the cars on the back straightaway. And I never will forget Rich Ricky, he with the 406, he rolled up alongside of me, and he pointed out that the tire was slick. And I said, oh boy. I, I took a deep breath and let my breath out then. I must have been holding my breath on the last five laps, and I took it oh, got it made, and about that time the right rear tire blew out. Beat him down the back straightaways with a flat right rear tire, and coming off the fourth corner, I went from first to fifth. <laughs> and he's today 200s. 44 big block modifieds, producing about either door's power per each. It's like an all star game. I've seen some very, very good races down here. And here comes Richie Urich. Urich coming on the inside. They bumped their cars coming off the corner. They had a superior car. I mean, it was, I still had, haven't figured out why that car was so good. I, I can still remember that race that I had to actually slow myself down because I, I didn't want to mess up at all. Or, but the car, the car would have went two or three tenths of a second faster if I pushed it. The first race I, I run Middletown Eastern States I won, we had radios. And I'm going to say 75% of the field didn't. So I had an advantage. Straight away lead, welcome back. Welcome back to Orange County, that's right. Brent Parker, the Budweiser corporate jet. Here I come into the Eastern States, my second one, 21 years old. 
I own all my own stuff, pay my own bills, and win Eastern States over the Ferriola car. It was just amazing. I mean, incredibly exhausting, too. <laughs> and the doctor in his second race in that car picked up the Eastern States 200. Can he make it two in a row? He's won this championship in his career nine times. Well, I was still pretty good winning the Eastern States race. I think I won a, a handful of times. A typical doctor moment. I watched him do it. That Middletown got in a jingle, turned it over, jumped out, you know, checked it out, made sure it was okay, and then, you know, raced up to a third place finish. So it's, uh, it's, it's a guy that has a no-quit attitude. But Danny was motivated and motoring. Danny, how do you take your big coffee? Well, I'll take mine on the outside, thank you. A unique aspect to Middletown's big race are the mandatory pit stops. All the other tracks, I don't know why they got away from that, but as a fan, there's so many different things that can happen. This is trouble down here. Guys cannot get in and out of their pits. Cars are going left and right. We got air hoses. Decker, we just, I think a crew member just got run over. This is bedlam down here. Cars had to stop in the middle of the pits. They can't get through. Watching the good guys trying to, you know, weave their way through and the obstacle course and try to get back to the front, and it's probably the best part of Eastern State. That was as scary as a pit episode as I have ever seen in this sport. That was completely nuts down there, if you want to be absolutely honest about it. Pit stops kept the 200-lap race interesting, as did the fact that it didn't matter where you started, but how you finished. Eastern States eluded us. Back in the 80s, it didn't bother us because we were winning, winning everything else. And then naturally, as time went on, it was like, are we going to get this off the bucket list or not? And we finally did in 2007. You know, we got there on Sunday morning and, and uh, started 44th. And as the day went on, it just really fell into our hands, and it was a godsend that we made it, we did it, finally, and got that one off the list. Another name on the list of Eastern States royalty is Harry Barron, the 1982 winner. The Eastern States race that he won, it was pretty neat. I know Brett Hearn was there, Kenny Brightbill. Um, they were all there, and it, it was different back then because we went the whole race without stopping. You know, it changed his life forever as far as a driver and stuff, which was pretty neat. I was standing in the infield with that race. It was kind of neat because when Tommy Meyer won the race, where we were parked was sort of the same spot that we were parked when my dad won the race 25, 30 years later. But it, we were standing basically in the same spot, which made it pretty neat. No matter what race you were looking forward to, the Eastern States was one of the last ones you may be racing that year, and it was one of the biggest. To get that honor of being able to win it is incredible. Yeah, it's 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 awesome. Still to this day, can't believe that I won it. And uh, I just I sat in that car that day, and it was a it was a perfect car. It was a perfect storm. And I won that race that day, the 200 lapper, easier than I won a whole bunch of other races. And it was just weird. Everything came together that day. It just it all happened so fast. It was amazing. And to this day, I look back at it, and I'm just like I, I'm blown away that I won it. Stuart Friesen leading the Eastern States, there was some type of scoring error and they put him back to second and he knew he was first. And they came on the radio and said, no, you're second. And I said, there's no way we're second. You know, we're, we're clearly leading by like car lengths. Uh, I was his crew chief that time, so we couldn't find any officials to talk to. So he stopped the car on the track on the front stretch, sat Indian style on the roof and uh, it was a classic move. I don't know what to say. You know, they made a huge mistake and it cost us the race and whatever, you know, it's... Uh, Super unfortunate. Uh, it ended up being a pretty crazy scene uh, unfolding towards the end of the race, and, uh, and I, <laughs> I really haven't forgot. In 1985, Jack Johnson was running the Eastern States race in memory of his late friend and teammate, NASCAR modified champion Richie Evans, who died three days prior in a racing accident. Jack was devastated by that. He and Richie were pretty close friends. And he didn't want to come, but he was in a position to win the overall dirt championship and so on. And so he did come here. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. He, he didn't time trial well. He didn't qualify through his heat. He didn't qualify through uh, the consolation last chance race. So he started like 43rd or 44th from the last position. He won the race. I just put the microphone in front of Jack and I said, Jack, how do you feel? 
He said, all he said was, this one's for Richie. And it was dead silence. And I looked around. A lot of people were crying. And uh, that, to me, was probably the most dramatic moment that I've ever experienced in, uh, in racing. We didn't expect to go out and do what we did in racing. We just went out to have fun. White flag in the air, and it's Chuck McKee on his way to victory here in the 39th annual running of the Eastern States 200. It's fortunate when things do go right. Chuck McKee, the Orange County track champion, towel in the air, climbs on the roof of the Frankie Sausage Bar. Growing up in Middletown, it was the race to win. You know, if I would have quit racing that day, I would have been fulfilled. That's what it meant to me.